Right. Uh, so Russell's dad uh, had dementia. Uh, and um, so Russell had a firsthand sort of personal knowledge of the experience of living with a loved one who has it and the effect that that person's experience has on a family. Uh, I guess one of the things that's sort of uh, maybe different about the exploration of Alzheimer's in this film is that we're not really so much exploring the effect that Russell's character's condition has on others. Hi, Adam. Uh, first of all, congratulations for your debut as a director. It's such a big debut because it's a very ambitious movie. I really like it. So congratulations. Oh, Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's a very, okay. very ambitious gamer chair that you have behind you. Oh yeah, I specialize in video games. Also, okay. <laughs> that's why we have a lot of gaming things. First of all, ambitious movie. Why did you choose this project as your first feature? Um, I was really, I was drawn to what it was thematically. Uh, this story about memory and the role that memory and our awareness of our past plays in shaping who we are as people. And I was compelled by the character that Russell. Uh, Crow ultimately plays in Roy Freeman, this man who um, is bereft of memory, um, who, you know, through the, the course of exploring this mystery of murder is really unpacking a mystery about himself. Um, so I, I was drawn, I was drawn to sort of the irony of that. Okay, well, ambitious movie, challenging also. What was your biggest challenge by doing this movie? Um, I think the biggest challenge is uh, time and money. Uh, <laughs> we had 30 days to shoot it. Uh, we shot it in oh, Australia. 30 days? Yeah, we had 30 days. Um, uh, and we shot it in Australia where they shoot a 10 hour day as opposed to a 12 hour day. So mm -hmm. that's 10 hours less every week. Um, and um, So when you think about that, that's, you know, 10 hours less over a, uh, over a week, over six shooting weeks, that's 60 hours. That would be an additional five days if you were shooting it in the United States. And we could have used those additional five days. Um, that, and I would say just sort of the practicality of taking what you've written and translating it to the screen Um, we shot everything on location. Not a single thing in the movie was a built set. Um, so we didn't have a wall that we could move to put a camera there. Um, you know, it was, I think those were kind of, those were the challenges. I think you learned a lot during this uh, ah, movie sure. because you have to manage time, money, and the idea that you cannot change the light <laughs> because yeah. you have to go with the day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. very interesting. I have a particular question because Alzheimer for me is a personal subject also because I have family that had suffered Alzheimer and it goes in with the with the DNA. So it can be a bit sensitive subject. Sure. How was it to go with that and also guide Russell to portray such a complicated character that has to go back and forth with such a delicate uh, idea? Right. Uh, so Russell's dad uh, had dementia uh, and um, So Russell had a firsthand sort of personal knowledge of the experience of living with a loved one who has it and the effect that that person's experience has on a family. Uh, I guess one of the things that's sort of uh, maybe different about the exploration of Alzheimer's in this film is that we're not really so much exploring the effect that Russell's character's condition has on others, right? It's really kind of a singular solitary experience of what it would be like to live alone with this with this experience um it's not a movie like um still alice if you will yeah. where you know julianne moore's character has early onset alzheimer's and you're watching the effect that it has on those around her i think in our story it's more um a way to talk more universally about what it's like to be um, alone and feel lost and disconnected from others. Um, you know, it's kind of a thematic parable in that way. Um, who It's a man who wants to connect, 
and in his effort to connect um he undergoes this treatment because memory is sort of what gives people context for who they are in the world and then by the end of the story he's sort of um uh, questioning whether that was the right thing to do or if sort of ignorance would have been bliss in his case. But um, I think that in our story, you know, if I, I think if a viewer is is tuning in to sort of see a movie that's sort of a deep dive into the ins and outs of Alzheimer's, this is not really that movie. Um, it's really, um, it's part of who he is as a character and the thing that sort of keeps him uh, isolated um, but in some ways, um, it's, um, it's kind of a, a tool through which we're able to explore bigger themes. Well, you say that something that for me kind of resonates in my head, that memories are what you, what make you someone and he getting his memory back sometimes can be something that he has to deal with and it, not in the best way, actually, because it's really, was really hard. No spoilers. Yeah. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Memento in that way, the, mm. the way the, the movie is uh, approaching the, mm. the subject. Do you have any favorite movie that you kind of aspire in for making Sleeping Dogs or any director that you say, I want to do something that kind of resembles like, like that? Uh, yeah, there's this movie uh, that Alan Parker made called Angel Heart with Mickey Rourke in it. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. I know Mickey Rourke. I think I know the movie, but I'm not, not so sure if I saw it. Yeah, it's it's worth seeing. I mean, so I, Angel Heart and this Adrian Line movie called Jacob's Ladder were both movies that are kind of touchstones for me. Memento wasn't so much a reference point for me. Um, I I saw that I saw Memento when it came out, but I haven't actually seen it seen it since. Um, and I, I'm a big Chris, Christopher Nolan fan, but if you asked me to pitch you back the the plotting of Memento, I don't think I could. I don't think I could do I could, it. Yeah, it will be really tricky, actually. But it, for me, it's not similar to Memento, but it has those things about going through the memory and how we approach memories. One last question to finish because we, I have to leave you, unfortunately. Do you think if we see this movie again, we are gonna see things that you left us there to? I make connections because when you yeah. see it the first time, it's very different when you see it the second time. Uh, for sure. Yeah, there are definitely little Easter eggs that are kind of dropped along the way, uh, but they're they're subtle. There is no one singular Easter egg that tips, yeah. tip, tips the ending. Uh, it's kind of more a collection of them. Okay, well, thank you, Adam. Congratulations again on your movie. I loved it. I think you've made an amazing job as a director, so congratulations. I, I hope to see more movies from you. <laughs> thank you so much. That's kind of okay. you. Thank you.